Listener Production. Hi, I'm Elle Ferguson and this is Sliding Doors, where I chat with inspirational people from the world of fashion and beauty about their sliding door moment. That is, the moment they took a chance or made a life change that led them to where they are now at the top of their game. Having founded my own fashion and beauty brand, The Elle Effect, I know that succeeding in these industries isn't easy. So I'm inviting the people I admire most on the podcast to share their stories, insights, and tips for turning your passion into a career. Let me try this. I hope this works. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? (gasps) I I got it. I got it. I got it. Ash Holm is a celebrity makeup artist who works with the Kardashians, Lana Del Rey, Ariana Grande, and BB Rexa, to name a few. But Ash actually started her career as a makeup artist in a mall in Houston, Texas. And with perseverance, a power stance, and a never give up attitude, she has now become one of the best makeup artists in the world. Hi. Ferguson. I'm so happy to see you. I know, I miss you so much. I wish we could see each other more. This is crazy. I first met Ash three years ago when I booked her to do my glam for the People's Choice Awards in Los Angeles. I didn't realize that I was quite possibly meeting the coolest chick in town. Let me re- start recording. Okay. Did you have a bag of headphones? I saw you walk in with that and I was like... Literally had a bag of headphones. I don't know why I'm this person. I was like, why am I Why am I a hoarder? Like, I don't even know why I have that. <laughs> I kind of love it though. <laughs> Ash, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. I think the last time I saw you was on a shoot in LA, yes. but I cannot believe I've like locked you in to this. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like all of those things that we've done finally led us here. So thank you for having me. Yay. So to start off things, I like to ask people a fast five. So don't think about it too much. You've literally got to tell me the first answer that comes into your head. It's really funny because they're often the opposite to what I think you're going to say. So here we go with our fast five. What's the last song you listened to? Ooh, the last song I listened to, to be honest with you, Britney Spears, Oops, I Did It Again. You know what? (laughs) Nothing else needs to be said to that. I'm good with it. I'm there with you. I'm for it. All good. (laughs) Don't even ask. No, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. Snacks, sweet or salty? Salty. Item you can't live without? Mm, Probably my buxom extrovert mascara. What's your guilty pleasure? Probably chocolate. What's the last photo on your phone? It's actually a mood board for a magazine cover shoot that I have to do. I love that. This coming week. That's like, that's (laughs) amazing. I love that. Very work-related. That's good though. You're focused. (laughs) You're focused. I love these questions. That's awesome. You've learned a lot about people. It's actually quite interesting because the people that throw you one that you would never have thought of, you're kind of like, okay, alrighty then. I should do this on my YouTube channel. I'm taking this idea when I bring people on. Go with it. It's a really good icebreaker. I'm into it. So Ash, I met you, I think three years ago when you did my makeup for the People's Choice Awards. And I'd never met you before, but I had so many people suggest you to me. And I was really lucky that you were available. You walked into the room and I instantly, I fell in love with you because you have the most amazing energy. And it's been so incredible to kind of follow along your journey and actually see how much of a hard work you are. And you inspire me to push. I mean, you just launched the YouTube channel. You're working with amazing brands and we know you as this incredible makeup artist, but where did it all start for you? How did you break into the industry? You know what? Um, For me, I feel like it actually started pretty early on because at some point in your life, someone is going to introduce makeup to you in some way, shape or form. We're going to see it, right? Yeah. And I just feel like for me, it started as a toddler. My parents gave me this Princess Jasmine chapstick. I'll never forget it. And I literally have receipts. I have photo documentation of me holding up the chapstick, screaming, so excited. And I felt like it was that moment that I, there was something there, you know, I had no idea where, what it would evolve to, um, how far it would go, but I knew it was there. And 
as far as getting into the industry, you know, I graduated high school and I convinced my parents to let me go to cosmetology school because at the time there was no makeup schools where I grew up in Houston, Texas. So I convinced them to let me go to cosmetology school. And, you know, while I was there, I realized, I mean, I knew this going into it. It's mainly hair. We probably did make up a few times, but those few times that I got to learn and do makeup, it was, oh my God, it was just like something inside me. It just like warmed me up. Like I just loved that feeling of being able to create. And while I was in cosmetology school, I actually got hired at Matt Cosmetics as a freelancer. And that's kind of when it all when it all started. I graduated cosmetology school. I moved back to Houston, Texas. And from there, I continued my journey at Mac Cosmetics. And I got hired at one of the biggest Mac stores in the US. And I was helping like 50 people a day, learning how to multitask, you know, working with different ethnicities, skin tones, skin conditions. So I really felt like that's when the journey started for me and that I knew. I wasn't going anywhere and I was not leaving the makeup world. So you studied, went into Mac and then was there somebody, I mean, you said your parents gave you the Aladdin chapstick. I love that because you look like Princess Jasmine. So it's like so perfect. (laughs) Was obsessed. (laughs) Obsessed. So who was your cheerleader? Do you know what I mean? Did your parents, were they like cheering you along? Did you, did they ever have a different path for you? How did that go? Of course. I mean, you know, I've always had really supportive parents. I'm really thankful for that. But I mean, just like all parents, they worry, right? They wanted me to, you know, they probably had a different idea of the way my maybe career or, you know, school was going to go. But um, and all in all, they were really supportive of me. And I feel really thankful to, you know, have their support throughout this entire journey, even getting into this so young. But for me, the person that's really believed in me more than I've believed in myself is my husband, Hamed. And, you know, at the time he was my boyfriend. And, you know, I actually met him towards the end of my MAC cosmetics career, if you will. You know, he kind of came into my life towards that ending period. And he really saw how much I was obsessed with my career, obsessed with makeup. He was like, wow, this person really has something here. He had never really seen someone that was so sure of themselves and what they were doing. And um, he thought it was really unique and special. And I think he was drawn to me because of that. And he continued to coach me early on, you know, when we first met. And I had never had a boyfriend or even like a friend that really pushed me. I was always patting myself on the back and pushing myself. But I met him and I felt like, my career really started to go to the next level because all it takes is for you to meet one person and your whole life can completely change if that person believes in you. And for me, it was him. And, you know, when I was at Matt Cosmetics, I really wanted to be a trainer and it was a really higher up artistry direction kind of position. And I knew that I had to have that job. So I I was there for many years working at Mac climbing up the ladder. I started off really small and I ended up full time. And I started off as a product specialist because um, I knew that's what I needed to do. I was just following the steps to become a trainer and interview for that position one day. So I had to memorize every single ingredient that was in all of the Mac products. I was kind of that go-to person. If you had a question about something, I could answer it because I was obsessed with it. And being obsessed and having that discipline and consistency has always helped me to get to the next level. And I just kind of kept climbing. And, you know, I also worked really closely with the trainer in Houston. And um, there I learned how to public speak. I was constantly like practicing and working on my craft because I wanted that position. And part of that position, you had to facilitate these trainings to all the artists. And you also had to do master classes with the customers. And when senior artists would come in town, that's basically just another higher up position at Mac. I would work really closely with them. And I felt like I was taking all of the steps to get there. But finally, when that day came to interview for that position, um, I felt really good about it. But 
What's crazy is that, unfortunately, I didn't end up getting the job. We have to talk about this. Yeah, okay. Because I think we've all been on that path. You know what I mean? We've all been going towards what we think is the biggest goal. You know what I mean? What we've worked mm-hmm. towards. And yes. I think I'm very similar. You start at the bottom, you climb up that ladder. And I mean, like people don't see you when you were probably unpacking the boxes with the stock and sorting it out and training. Them. <laughs> like yes. we've all been there. Do you know what I mean? And I, right. I'd love to talk about how you didn't get that job. And then what happened next? Because it's really scary and you get really deflated and you're like, you think all your hope's gone. You know what I mean? Like that's your dream job. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. And I hadn't really thought about what I would do if I didn't get it. I was like, I'm getting this job. Yeah, Like there's no exceptions. And, um, you know, I took two weeks to think about it. I was still going to work every day, you know, Um, showing up at work, stocking not happy. products <laughs> and things like that. But um, I took two weeks to think about it. And during that time, my boyfriend was like, you're just meant for so much more. I think it's a sign, you know, and he really showed me the light. <laughs> and he was yep. like, you've been working really hard to build your freelance career around your full-time position. You know, I was basically working around the clock and taking customers on my off days, which I only had like one or two and I would do weddings and I was really making a name for myself. And I knew that, but I realized that, um, you know, this was a really tough decision to make. And, um, he kind of steered me in that direction and he was like, you should quit. And I was just like, you know what? you're right. I should quit. I I needed to close that door for another one to open. And I think sometimes it's so hard to see that. And it's so scary. And I just remember being, just telling myself, I was like, okay, if this doesn't work out, I can always go back to the mall and be a mall worker. And I'll go back to Mac as a Mac freelance makeup artist. Isn't that, it's crazy. I used to tell myself that. And I remember calling um, up the old trainers and telling them, you guys, you know, I could be back one day. I, I have no idea. Oh like, I just really didn't know. I was so scared, but I also did believe in myself. Yeah. And that's what's really important. And, and you know, Hamed really pushed me. He was like, you got this, just do it. And little did I know that I would work every single day since I quit. Yes. Yeah, so it really was meant to be and everything happens for a reason. And I think that, you know, we live in a society that, would have you believe that failing is shameful or dishonorable, but that's it's, it's a shame that people think that way because it takes a lot to be able to fall down and to get back up, dust yourself off and keep moving, you know? And I think that's what it's all about. You just, you have to um, just keep the process going and try something new if something didn't work out. So I'm really happy that it all went down that way. <laughs> would you call that your sliding doors moment? The big sliding door moment for me was when I didn't get the trainer position at Mac Cosmetics. Um, I'll never forget that. It was such a pivotal moment in my life, in my career. My whole life changed after that. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me at the end of the day was closing that door to open another one. And i um, really thankful for that because it led me to Los Angeles to pursue my entrepreneur, um, you know, freelance celebrity makeup career. Yes. And I love that you've worked every day since. I just love that, that we worry, <laughs> that we worry about it. And then, you know, like, I love that you've, you haven't had a day off. I mean, you know, like you've Thank just you. been able to go. So can I touch on, you've resigned, you've had two weeks Yes. You go to yes. LA. Yes. You pack your bags. Yes. Okay. So I left Mac and I started my freelance career in Houston first. Yep. And I stayed in Houston for six months and I was doing brides and I was doing event makeup. And every now and then a celebrity would come into town and they would find me on social media. And I remember doing their makeup and just that feeling that I would get, it was incredible. I knew that I wanted more of this, that I wanted to be working with, you know, A-list celebrities. And I wanted that to be my career. And the only way to do it was to move. But I was definitely very nervous about that. So Hamed, you know, my boyfriend kept telling me, just make some trips to LA during these six months. And 
let's, maybe we should move. We kept like playing with this idea, but didn't really know when it would go down, how it would happen. So I think I made like three trips to LA during that time. And I would just post on social media saying that I was, you know, going to be in LA, book me these dates. It would work sometimes, sometimes it wouldn't. And, you know, I would also reach out to people that I wanted to work with. Maybe they were influencers, YouTubers, models, you know, people that were up, up and coming. I think you just have to put it into the universe what you want and it will come back to you and it may not come right away but just know that it will eventually and so that's what I did I felt like I was had already hit a plateau as a freelancer in Houston so you know he had this kind of job that was in the medical world and he could relocate so we were really lucky we were able to pack up our whole life and we moved across the country and from there, that's when my career really started. I have goosebumps. I've got goosebumps. Oh, thank you. Because it's just so nice to hear something good happen to a good person, but also with hard work. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. It is. I also love the fact that, I mean, social media plays such a big part in our world, but I love the fact that you took the initiative to reach out. Do you know what I mean? Like you didn't wait, yes. you made contact, you never stopped working, but I love the fact that you actually put yourself forward. You put yourself out there. Yes. So when you got to LA, did you get an agent? You know, I I didn't. Um, I had no idea what to do, really. <laughs> I, I moved out to LA and, and I, I knew a few people. I didn't know a lot, but um, I, you know, I was really friendly and I met a few amazing people along the way when I first moved to Los Angeles. And I would ask questions all the time. I think it's really important to constantly ask questions, especially being in a new city. I remember when I first moved to LA, one of the questions that was always asked when I would show up at a freelance job was the hairstylist or the model, you know, somebody in the room would ask me, so what agency are you with? And I remember feeling so awkward about answering that question because I didn't really know how to answer it. I mean, I would tell them honestly, no, I I don't have an agent. And I realized that so many people had an, an agent. And then I started to ask more questions as, you know, time went by, I would ask the hairstylist. So um, when did you get with an agency? Things like this. You really have to ask because no one's going to tell you. There's no manual. There's no handbook. You really have to do all the work yourself. And a lot of information that I was able to gather was there were, you know, other really influential hairstylists and makeup artists would tell me, you know what, don't get an agent until you really feel like you need one. And, and I would always ask, well, when will that be? Yeah. I, I don't know what you mean. And they'd always tell me, you'll know. You'll know (laughs) because you'll get to this point in your career where you'll be so busy doing what you're doing that you won't have time to invoice people. You won't have time to answer emails and take the booking because, you know, you'll be with a client and then somebody will text or email you and they want to book you now. Everything is on the fly. Everything happens right away. And if you don't answer right away, you're going to miss it, you know, and someone else is going to get the job. That's just how it is out here. So. Um, yeah, so a year, a couple of years went by. I finally got an agency. And oh wow, you know, so just, like two, you were in LA a while before you got an agent. Oh yeah, I did so much on my own for so long. Um, yeah, a couple for a couple of years, I was my own agent. Good and, on you. Um, people would email me, and I would talk like I was someone else I did because that. I wanted them I to respect that. me. <laughs> did you have a name for that person? Did you sign? Oh off? yeah. I had a oh name. yeah. I I had to fire one of them. One was Kelly, and then the second one was Layla. I was like, you know what? Kelly's been here too long. She needs to go. I'm bringing in Layla. Okay. <laughs> I had mine so, was called mine was Pip Buck. Buckley. Pip Buckley would sign off on all emails. <laughs> I'm just happy that we both had this made up person that really was ourself. Mine got weird when people started inviting Pip to events. They'd be like, do you <laughs> oh, want to bring God. Pip to the event? I was like, she's unavailable. She's really <laughs> She's busy. unavailable. Wait, yeah. the best part is when they're like, can we get on the phone? <laughs> And I would say, you know what? I'm extremely busy. I'm actually her administrative assistant oh, and I'm just here to answer emails. You know, I was always coming up with something. Yeah, but, you're good. Um, I think it's a great idea to do this as an entrepreneur that's just starting out because you you want to be respected and you want to look legit. And yeah. I felt like before that, I was talking as myself. Yeah. And I started doing this actually in Houston. Yeah. You know, I learned it early on through some some 
influencers that I had met making those trips to LA, yeah. you know? Yeah. So just putting myself in an uncomfortable situation, I, I learned so much along the way. And I think it really, it really does help to start your career like that. Yeah. And I think it's very true. I think a lot of people think they need that agent straight away. Like mm-hmm. I love my agent, but th- you know the time when you need it. You know what I mean? Yes. And when you don't. And I think when you don't, you've just got to keep hustling. Absolutely. And then when you get it, it's almost like the hustle's still there, but then you share mm-hmm. the hustle with the other person. Exactly. You really have to get your reps in. I can't stress that enough. And, you know, for me, it was helping 50 people a day at Mac, working with like all those different ethnicities, skin tones, skin textures, skin disorders, like there's just so, and then in LA, it was, you know, just doing everything on my own, being my own boss, being my own agent, booking everything, yeah. invoicing everybody, you know, getting the work. Uh, you really have to just like continue to hustle and work and just get those reps in and then everything will align. But it's so important to just really enjoy the journey and live in the moment and not think, when is my time going to come? Yeah. When is Ariana Grande going to be reaching out? Know that it will happen, but everybody has their time. So hold up. We have to say so two things. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going there. Trust me. I'm going to the, down the celebrity yeah. path in a minute. I just want to ask, when you got to LA and I guess you'd really like made the sacrifice, you'd moved. Was there a time where you were kind of like, I can't do this. Almost like you had, like it got too hard or you had a bit of that imposter syndrome. Was there a time when you felt like that? You know, there's been a lot of really tough days being a, you know, entrepreneur for sure. Um, But I definitely never felt like I had imposter syndrome. Um, I was always really confident knowing I would figure this out and things would align. Um, But it really helps to have someone to just keep coaching you and cheering you on along the way. And, you know, you really got to just remember that it's all about the growth and it's a learning process and you're going to make mistakes along the way. Um, I always knew deep down things would work out, but I think it is completely normal to feel those feelings. Yeah. So you're in LA and you're hustling, you're doing a million things, you're being Layla, you're answering your emails. (laughs) When is that moment? When was the moment when Ariana Grande or, I mean, Everybody would probably know you now from making so many iconic looks on the Kardashians. Like, I mean, the looks that you're doing on them are unbelievable. How how did that happen? You know, I started working with A-list celebrities um, kind of when I first moved to LA, which doesn't happen all the time. And it wasn't always consistent. I'm not saying it was consistent at all, but... um, it was, you know, having a really amazing reputation and um, word of mouth travels yeah. fast in LA. And it is a, there's so many people here, but everybody knows everybody. So always be on your A game because people are always watching. Yeah. And um, through word of mouth, Chloe um, Kardashian booked me. And it was actually when I had first moved to um, Los Angeles. So that's kind of when it all started. And um then uh, some time went went on and a few years later I started working with Chris Jenner and then Kim and you know it just these things they take time it doesn't all happen at once you know you have to really build yourself are you so nervous when you pack your kit to go do Chloe's makeup for the first time and you've just arrived in LA oh <laughs> like how does one okay. deal with that <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was crazy because when she reached, her team reached out to me and um, they thought I lived in Houston because she was going to be in Houston for something that she was doing. Yep. And um, it was like New Year's, it was New Year's Eve and um, she was going to be in Houston, Texas. So she was looking for a local makeup artist, which I think they rarely look for. Yeah. They usually bring their team Travel. with them. It was just an, um, a unique situation. And um They reached out to me. Um, I answered and I didn't say that I lived in LA. I just got on a flight and I went right back. I love that. (laughs) I love that. I was so excited. I had actually just gotten engaged to, my boyfriend had just proposed to me like two days before. (laughs) And um, I was so excited to be engaged. And I was like, I'm sorry, babe, but do you mind if I actually (laughs) don't celebrate New Year's with you? Because this opportunity came up and 
he was like, you have to go. He was like, get the ticket now, like get on the plane now. And um, I was just so excited. I don't think I, I was so prepared for this moment though. I mean, I just knew in my heart that all of this felt so right. So, yeah. but yes, packing my kit. I mean, I overpacked. I probably brought everything. Yeah, you would, you would. <laughs> you have to, you know. So Ariana Grande, can we just go there for a minute? Did she contact you? Her team yeah. um, reached out to my agency. So through word of mouth is honestly how I've been able to probably get all of my clientele. So that's why I think it's so important to have, you know, an outstanding reputation, always be professional. Um, if you're on time, you're late, you should be early. There's just little ways to, you know, there's just um, little things that I've always tried to do to, you know, stay successful. Yeah. You're somebody that comes across so confident. You're so kind, but you're so confident. And I'm now thinking back to when I DM'd you and I'm like, hey, it's Elle from Australia. <laughs> you were so nice to me. And I love that Ariana Grande's people and the Kardashians people were also hitting you up in, in your DMs. How do you build your confidence? Because you're surrounded by so many, like you said, A-list celebrities. How do you build your confidence? You know, um, confidence can be a really tricky thing, especially yeah. if you're going through your journey alone. You know, you have to believe in yourself. And um, for me, uh, I feel like because I have such a really interesting schedule where I don't have a nine to five job, my schedule is all over the place. It changes in the blink of an eye. Um, so it's, you really have to stay healthy and um, you really have to stay grounded. And a few things that have really helped me is to have some kind of schedule around the chaos. <laughs> and um, I always, you know, I try to take care of myself by working out, running a mile every morning just to get my mind right, eating healthy because your diet has a lot to do with how you feel and how you look. Um, and so I, I try to have like green smoothies, eat right. I mean, I slip every now and then. I'm not perfect, <laughs> but I try. And um, I also try to meditate for at least 10 minutes a day. And sometimes I do it on my way to work or before I leave, because for me, it's more about the breathing. I need to practice those breaths because it, it makes me feel really calm. Because mm -hmm. when I get to work, I never really know what. Um, what it's going to be like. What's the energy? What's the vibe? How is my client going to be feeling today? Nothing is ever personal. It's just, you never know what's going to go down. And I want to be ready for anything and be able to handle it. So what's really helped me um, is meditation. Yeah. And I've been doing this for years you know, ever since I moved out here, it is, it has really helped my lifestyle yeah. because I feel like once I've meditated, I'm really able to take on anything. If a curveball is thrown at me, I'm going to know how to handle it calmly and everything's going to be okay. I'm going to know the right words to say. So, um, I highly recommend it. And another thing that I started to do a couple of years ago was power posing. Okay. Um, I learned this watching some Ted talks. You can, you know, do like the superwoman pose and like put your hands on your hips and like have your, your legs kind of spread and standing up with like your chin held high and just doing that for like one minute or two minutes, you know, in the mirror or in the bathroom or wherever you are before you're about to do something major. There's something really powerful about that pose that just makes you feel like you can do anything and you're going to conquer it. And it sounds silly. No, it doesn't. Things... We're both doing it now. We're both doing a version like, of no. it right now going, <laughs> yeah. I like I that. Love it. I'm into that. And I feel like I, I have to do these things. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, the higher up you, you, you go in life, no matter what career path you're taking, these things will help you. Um, I think it only gets harder the higher up we go. Yeah. So we definitely need some kind of like, you know, um, ritual routine to help us get our mind right, to stay on track. Totally. And I think it's amazing. You've obviously launched your YouTube channel, which is incredible. Yes, thank and you. I love it. I mean, it makes so much more sense now that you're such a good leader and instructor you. what you learned at Mac and all of that training. And I the masterclasses and things like that, I find it so amazing that you've kind of come full circle and now you've got your own platform. You're giving that back. How did that come about? Because that's just, I mean, YouTube's a whole nother beast in itself on top of everything else that you're doing. First off, thank you. I feel like you really have a grasp of my, my background here. And um, 
You know, it's, it's really crazy how something that I learned so many years ago has come full circle. And I've been able to use those skills that I learned at a mall. Yeah. Okay. Let's not forget where I came from. (laughs) And I was able to take that with me um, and, you know, start my own career with. Um, So with YouTube, it's funny because it's something that I was always really petrified of and afraid of. And um, once I started to get into it, I started to have a lot of fun with it. So um, Hamed, again, my, my husband, that's all him. I'm not taking full credit I feel credit like I'm hitting this. him I up after this. I feel like he's going to get a message from me. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> Can you coach me? <laughs> hey, what are you doing in your spare time? I need a little it's, push. No, I, he loves it. So many people ask him this. It's hilarious. He's so good at, he's so good at it. He's such a, he's such a, a loving person. And I'm so thankful for him because, you know what? I don't know if I would have started YouTube without him or yeah. many of these crazy things that I've done. (laughs) Um, He really pushed me during quarantine to get out of my comfort zone. So little by little, we started um, investing in lighting and equipment and things like that. And he was like, why don't you just do it? Just go for it. And um, I love to teach and educate. And um, I really want to build, you know, a makeup community that lifts each other up. And I feel like when I first moved here, there was really no one to go to for questions and resources and help. I was in the dark just trying to figure everything yeah. out. And um, I kind of, I really wish like there was, you know, more outlets and things like that for people to ask questions. And I think my YouTube channel is just that. I just want to build a, um, a makeup community that supports each other. So definitely check out my channel for anybody listening. It's that amazing. wants to learn more career advice and of course, how to up your makeup game. I have to say that when we did our live together and we did that tutorial, that was the best I'd ever done my own the makeup best. on me. I was like... You looked I'm, amazing. I'm not just saying that. I did I we were like off the live and Joel was like, you look good. I was like, well, that's Ash. <laughs> so if you're not if you're not watching the YouTube channel, you guys need to watch any of your lives because they're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I have to ask, you're surrounded by so many incredible women and women that are really leading the way for the rest of us. And I like to think it's our new way of being that we're lifting each other up. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, like this morning, I saw Kim had posted you wearing her silk skims and then she'll post your YouTube. Yes. Like, is that unbelievable to know that you've got support of, if not the biggest celeb in the world? You know what? Um, sometimes I have to slow down <laughs> and just think about everything that's going on because I think I'm, we're moving so fast throughout life And it's nice to sometimes sit back and reflect on that (laughs) because I do want to pinch myself at times. And I feel, you know, so thankful to be surrounded by my clientele. I mean, they are the most inspiring, influential people that I have ever met and the most empowering women. And of course, you know, men men as well. But, um, you know, I'm around so many amazing women and... um, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty wild and I'm really thankful for it and just to be in their energy is incredible. And I've learned so much, so much. So I'm definitely really thankful to, you know, have them in my chair. Yeah, but I feel the same way about you. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel so lucky to have you in my circle of women that are my cheerleaders. So please oh, know that you, you do same that for here. me. Like it's a really nice place to be when we're all kind of going for the same thing and cheering each other on. Absolutely. I feel like, you know, there's enough to go around. And that's one thing that I love about my clients is, you know, they have been so supportive of me, of my career, of products that I've come out with, with other brands, things that I've wanted to launch. And likewise, you know, I will continue to lift them up, support them. So that's what it's really all about. We have to lift each other up. 100%. So, For somebody that's looking to go it alone or start their journey, I'm thinking all of the amazing makeup artists that are in the malls here in Australia, standing there or around the world listening to this, what advice would you give them? My best advice um, for anyone going out on their own, um, if it's in the makeup industry or if it's whatever career that you want to take, um, is consistency and discipline. Those two things have really um, 
shaped my career and me as a person. Um, you know, staying consistent with whatever task, whatever goal that you have. You know, if it's social media um, and you want to grow it, you should post every day, at least once a day. You know, it's just about taking that word consistency and applying it in your life and in your career in every aspect. And then it's about staying disciplined. You know, you have to um, follow through. I'm the type of person that when I have an idea that goes off in my head or there's a goal or there's something I want to purchase that's really expensive and I want to <laughs> reward myself, whatever it is, it's like I can't turn it off until I've achieved it. It will not come off. And it's like this off switch. And I think that's what has dis- that's what distinguishes me from everyone else is my work ethic. And um, if you can maintain the consistency and staying disciplined and just working, working so hard, you will achieve success and accomplish all of your goals one by one. I promise you that. You will start to manifest them right before your eyes. Um, there's no secret to success or any kind of you know special formula, but this method has helped me and um, I know it will help you too. So... You just got to keep going and believe in yourself and um, know that you deserve it. I love that. <laughs> Ash, I like seriously want to be your best friend in life, virtually oh, and in our life. Literally. You're, we, are. we discovered that I on a shoot. So much. As Cancerians have you're got You're the blonde version of me. Yes. The yeah. blonde version of I'm me. I'm so Hello. glad you recognize <laughs> that. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this episode with me. I know the people listening are going to benefit from everything that you have said. If you guys aren't following Ash, you need to because she is amazing and inspires you. Also, the makeup is flawless. So, Ash, thank you. Thank you, Elle. I'm a huge fan of you as well. Um, Thank you so much for having me. And yes, guys, come check out my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram. More exciting things to come this year. So make sure you're subscribed and following me because I have some really big announcements that um, I'm really excited to share with everybody. Yes. I love you, Elle. Thank you so much for having me. Sliding Doors is hosted by me, Elle Ferguson, producer Tina Matalov, audio production by Darcy Thompson, executive producer Jennifer Goggin, and a special thanks to my manager, Camille Toulouse, for always being a fresh pair of ears on each episode. Listener.